Paul Schiff, suddenly uncomfortable. Graveyards don't usually make me uncomfortable, but there's something about this tombstone that strikes a distant note within me. Something here just isn't right. They all died at the same year. Yes, it did indeed. And all on the same day, too. I turn away from the grave. The final remnant of the unfortunate Burns family and bite me lower lip. When I knock speak, my voice is barely a whisper, even quieter than the wind. Ha! Ah, how do you know that? It's just a story. I already told you that. I, I suppose, but... But when Emily said it, it didn't sound like a story. She sounded like deadly serious. Like serious, too. She looked serious, too. Her eyes narrowed, her lips pursed, her face stark white as though she could carved from stone. The fog swirls about us like a veil. It's even thicker than it was earlier this morning. I can taste the fog at the back of my throat when I inhale, in a cough. It tastes cold, rank, and repulsive. The taste of death. Just who is Emily anyway? She doesn't look like any girl I know. She doesn't act like any girl I know. I'm almost tempted to believe... But that would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? So, should I tell you my story? I must warn you though, it's rather dour. And then again, given all certain, what other kind of story could it be? You should already know how it ends. Dun dun dun! Foreshadowing. Emmeline Burns, born in 1836 to Philip and Perdita Burns, led a charmed life. Wait, right, hold on, let me get the accent back in. Her family was rather really weird to do, her grandfather being a lawyer, her father a banker, and she grew up in a large house with five bedrooms in the outskirts of Barbary. Given her father's profession, she was often away in London on business, but this did not upset Emmeline. She was old enough to understand that her father was needed to work so they could afford a nice house in her foreign clothes and the ribbons she wore on her hair, so she did not complain. Though, she did not see her father for months at a time. When he returned home, it was always with a present for Emmeline, or kissing on his cheek, and it was as though he had never been away at all. Philip was a kind man, though he may not have been the paragon of manly virtues. He's the runt of the litter. If you were a pig, he, we would have drowned him in the well, Grandmother Patience always griped. He was not particularly predisposed to the work of financing, and he did have a good head on his shoulders, and he was uh, relatively intelligent. Not even Grandmother Patience could deny that. It was, through, it was through his quick wits, rather than his magnificent charisma, of which he was sorely lacking, that Philip had been able to expand upon the Bird's family fortune, as he had invested a good deal of their money into the stock market. Emmeline really did love her father, despite his lack of presence in her life, or maybe because of it. They do say, after all, that absence makes the uncle frowned at fonder. Even when Philip was not at home, Emmeline had a great deal to busy herself with, and she was never bored or lonely. She'd help her mother with the embroidery, or exchange auto gossip with the servants, or go for long walks about the countryside, eating blackberries from the edgerows, and snagging her dress in the brambles. Emmeline's long-suffering governess, Elena Warren, certainly had her hands full when it came to disciplining the rowdy pupil. Though Emmeline was not intelligent, she had been born with the disposition of a sea captain or a polar explorer, and she was physically incapable of sitting still for five minutes at a time. That is, unless she was with Cornelia Linton. <laughs>